Making a game can be difficult. Too many try and too many fail. If you are developing games, you are up against some incredible odds. And what better way to increase those odds than taking your project to the next level? Adding multiplayer can be a tedious task, but with Photon and Unity, it becomes incredibly easy. Hey guys, we should make like epic intros every video. The first thing to do is import our assets, and for this I had made some sprites outside of the stream. I used mainly Hexels 2 and Photoshop, importing each of them and changing the parameters accordingly. Point filtering for all pixelated sprites, which they all are, anything that is going to be tileable needs their mesh type to be full wrecked. The pixels per unit are set to 32, but this is just in my case. Maybe your games are 16x16, 16 16, or 64x64, 64 64, or any number. Essentially, this is saying that within one unity meter, how many pixels should be shown. The majority of my assets are 32x32 32 32 pixels, so I set them accordingly. All animations or sprite sheets need to have their sprite mode set to multiple. Then you can simply slice them in the sprite editor. Then we are going to create our sorting layers for the ground assets. Assets showing above one another is going to be a higher sorting number, so set them accordingly first. For example, my scene has four layers in it. There are grass stems, grass, dirt, and sand, and in that order from top to bottom. Grass stems are set to zero, grass to negative one, dirt to negative two, and I think you get the idea, sand to negative three. We could even go as far to create a water level or even a deep water level, but that is for another day. Now the reason we are tiling these sprites on top of one another is because later on we are going to have blending using masks, which means we will eventually get terrain generation later on and then use the seed so that everybody is able able to create their own maps and everybody can connect to the same seat. Again it gets relatively in depth so that may be an entire video on its own. For now we are going to create a temporary mask which is just large PNG images made with a brush in Photoshop. Using this we can create a new game object for each mask and individually they are going to cut through the ground layers. So our first mask range is set to have the targeted layers on its front and of course the layer underneath that is going to be set on its back. Then set the sprite renderer's mask setting on the ground layer to be visible outside of masks and voila you should see a difference now. We can of course repeat this process for the other layers and come up with some random layouts. Now that the terrain is on a steady course, I ended up creating some movement for our character. This is relatively simple but we want this to work with networking. So I downloaded Photon then applied the correct app IDs which we can find on their website. Now we need to connect to a Photon server and create a room before we are able to spawn in our player. I've done this before many times on this channel so I'll speed through this part, all you need to do is create these methods. Connect to Photon, on joined lobby, on Photon random join failed, and on joined room. Connect to Photon is just so you can call it from the start method and it calls photonnetwork.connect using settings. Within those brackets you can then give it a version name so that other players are only connected to the same server if their versions are the same. If you connect to the server it should automatically put you into the lobby, if not you can go into the photon resources and change that to auto join lobby. If this is successful photon will call on joined lobby and upon joining the lobby you call to join a random room. If someone has already created a room, then you automatically join that. Otherwise, it will return on photon random join failed. This means that there are either no rooms created or all the available rooms are full. So we can then create our own room and if we are then successful, photon calls on joined room. And voila, we are now connected to a room. From here, you can change your UI or spawn a welcome screen, but that's for you to decide. Now that we have a connection, we have terrain, we also need to create our player. This one was relatively simple, but what I'm going to talk you through is how to make the player move. We only need two scripts on our character, one is called player input and the other is called movement. They're not very creative names, but they get the job done. In our player input script, we have a simple click to move function. Within the update function, create an if statement to determine if the mouse button is clicked. Then create a method to call upon a successful click. I called this send movement. Later down the line we need to send a lot more than just movement so I'm leaving this a bit broad. 
Within the send movement method, we require the position that the player has clicked. This is going to be a local vector too, which we are going to gather using camera.main.screen to world point. Within the brackets of this, we can put the screen position, which in our case is just the input.mouse position. Finally, we send that information across the internet using a remote procedural call, also known as an RPC, and this is being sent to every other player in the game, including yourself. And we can do this by getting the current game object's photon view. Now, if you are like me and you are too lazy to get the photon view, you can change from mono behavior to photon.mono behavior. Now you can automatically use the photon view on the game object by typing in photon view. Follow that by .rpc and in the brackets we are going to put the method name as a string. Then the photon targets.all via server, which is basically saying that we send this message to everybody, including ourselves, via a server. And finally, any other parameters we would like to send. In this case, we want to send the click position, so we'll just add that in. Now to receive the movement, we created a second script that will be available to everybody. Player input is only available to their respective owners. In the movement script, we create a method with PUNRPC in square brackets above it. For this, I called the method receive movement. This has a local parameter pos, which we stated and sent in our previous script. We then create a vector2 variable at the top of the script to hold the next position of the player. And in receive movement, we turn that position into the last click position sent across the network. Within the update function, I've created a distance check between our player's position and the target position to determine how far we are from that position. If we are not close enough to that position, we can use vector2.move towards to have our character move towards the new position. However, this doesn't account for any pathfinding, which is why I'm not going to go any further with that. The final game will definitely need pathfinding, and this is just a simple way to show movement. I also added some extra details for flipping the character to face the click direction by flipping the image, and also some animation control, which will all be talked about more in depth later on. Finally, if we go back into our manager script, we can use photon network .instantiate to then instantiate our player. Remember your player's game object must be in a resources folder within your project somewhere. And in order to have it spawn across the network, it must have a photon view. And in order to instantiate it across a network, unlike normal instantiation, the new photon.instantiate is going to require a string instead of a game object. Once you do that, you can hit play and watch your character move around wherever you click. Now remember, my C Sharp is not as refined as other people, this is just incredibly basic stuff and hopefully I'm going to keep it that way throughout the entire series. If you do want to take a look at any of the scripts, they should all be available in a paste bin, link should be in the description for that. I will be continuing the game dev live streams shortly after this video releases, so keep that notification bell on. Thanks for watching guys, if you have an idea you want to see made into this game, I'm relatively active in the live stream chat, so that's a good place for that. Anyway, good luck and have fun.